At the beginning of the war, I was nearly 14 years of age. The war started in September, and I was 14 in the October. Um, all the children were being evacuated, but my father thought I was old enough to go to work, which I did, delivering milk on a bicycle. Um, I stayed there for about two or three years, and then I went to work in Woolworths. Um, I stayed there till I was called up at the age of 18, and I either had to go into the forces or into a munitions factory. Um, I went into munitions. Uh, I was tra trained to be an arc welder, uh, making Crusader tanks. Uh, I used to ride to my uncle, who was out in the desert, one of the desert rats, and his joke was always, no wonder they're falling to pieces when we get them out here if you're making them. <laughs> um, for me, I was a teenager right through the war, and so I wasn't really afraid. I wasn't afraid of the bombings. Um, I was caught many, many times when the air raid had started, but my father was a very strict man and said that wherever we were, where we had to be at home. So uh, I ran home one night during an air raid, and I, was, uh, I had shrapnel in both legs. Uh, I was then taken to hospital. I've still got those scars to prove my war wounds today. <laughs> but, um, during the war, uh, there were very happy times and there were very sad times. You are inclined to try and forget the sad times. I was going out, I wouldn't say caught in a boy, but I was going out with a boy when he was home every time he came on leave. And he was killed at the age of 19. And his mother had five sons and she lost four of them in the war. That was a very, very bad time then. Thinking about the day itself. The day itself. Well, I was nearly 20 years of age, as it, you know, for the VE day. Um, we knew we were going to have a party. All the streets were having parties. And we woke up on that morning, it was raining. And we were all disappointed because we thought we, we wouldn't be able to have the party out in the street but it cleared up and um, the neighbours all brought the tables out, uh, sheets for tablecloths and all the food that they'd collected as much as they could, spam, jellies, all that we had, you know, rock cakes, all those kind of things, uh, lemonade made with lemonade powder <laughs> and um, the daytime was, the morning was very exciting because people were stringing these flags across the streets from one bedroom to another. Where they got them from, I never know. But we remember one funny incident because somebody suddenly noticed amongst the lot of them there was a German flag. So they really had to take that down. <laughs> and um, that was that was funny. So can you just say that one again, just, just suddenly the German flag thing, because there's a car going through at the time. Oh, right. Tell me about, tell me about the flags. Um, where they came from, I don't know. Um, where I lived in Liverpool, as you know, was a port, so I think that they mostly came from the ships. Um, and they strung the flags from one side of the road to the other, from people's bedroom windows. Hundreds of them they were. And um, somebody suddenly noticed that in amongst a lot of them was a German flag, so we had to take that down, horridly. <laughs> and the daytime was for the children. All games were being played, everybody was excited. There was a little tiny pub right in the middle of the street and that was bursting at the seams all day long. Um, the night time was for the grown-ups. So I was pretty lucky I was able to go to the children's ones, being young, and then the adults one in the evening. In the evening they lit a bonfire on the corner of the junction and uh, it went on, oh, I think till three o'clock in the morning. Everybody was, oh, I, I can remember one person, they got brought the piano out into the road because that's all they had as music. And in the middle of the street, there was a, a, like a concrete air raid shelter built. Well, how they got the piano up on the flat roof of the, of the air raid shelter, I don't know, but there it was. And that's where it stayed all night. And the man who played the piano got steadily drunker and drunker and drunker till he could play no more. <laughs> and as I say, the pub was best and it seems everybody falling out. And everybody was such, so excited about it. They really were, they didn't, 
They didn't quite know what we were going to do. We didn't know what to do after the war because all we lived was the war and everything was to do with the war. So I suppose just after the war, it was a bit flat. The men still hadn't been discharged and come home. The women were waiting for them to come home. But things got, they just, they just felt flat. Um, as I say, I was only young, so we had a whale of a time in the night time. My sister was 18 and I was 20 and we went out with all the rest of them in the street. We met two Air Force officers and stayed with them all night long and had a good drink <laughs> and got told off when we got home. <laughs> um, that's pretty much all I can remember about that, that day. A very, very exciting day. Um, as you went into other streets and other roads, there was cars going by, but remembering there wasn't as many cars as there is today, but they were all waving Union Jacks, all of them, the car hooters going. And I can also remember the ships on the River Mersey. My father was a dock pilot on the River Mersey. And um, I can remember all the ship's horns going all day long. The Union could hear them all day from the docks. Um, it was just so exciting. Your emotions, were they all elated on that day? Yes, very much so. A very exciting day. Um, I, the only, I can remember things that happened in the war. I mean, we had the air raids, we had to go to the shelter every night. But um, I can remember things from Pathé News, the bad things, like Belson and all those things. I can remember sitting in the pictures, as we call them then, not the cinema, just horrified as what I was looking at and couldn't believe that people could do that. But you see, we weren't living that. We weren't living that kind of thing. And I couldn't believe that we could ever do anything like that. But it happened, as we all know. Um, but it was a very, very exciting day, VE Day. And then, of course, later came VJ Day, which wasn't quite so exciting, but I don't think we had the food for that one. <laughs> because, as you know, rationing went on until 1954, mm. although the war started in 1945. It uh, ended in 45, and rationing still went on, so there was still a shortage of food. Um, what about the lights and things like that? Oh, you mean, you mean the street lights? Oh, yes, of course. I mean, all during the war, all we could do was walk around with a torch on the ground. Um, what cars there were, they had to have their headlights painted so there was a little tiny spot. Um, the street lights weren't allowed to be on at all, and every house was blacked out, of course. Um, during the war, if you showed a little tiny chink of light, you had a warden there. Turn that light out. What do you think you're doing? <laughs> uh, but um, I don't suppose where I lived it was as exciting as London was, I don't know. I've seen films of the London excitement, you know, around Buckingham Palace, and that seemed absolutely fabulous to me. But where I was in Liverpool, it was just as good. Yeah, it really was.